Amen. Come on. As they go, we just speak over them that the Holy Spirit is not different for kids than He is for adults. Come on. He is God. He is who He is all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. I am just, I love this time of year. I know some of you do for the decorations and, and uh, just the change in attitude that so many often uh, portray and the lights and the songs and what are up But I just am excited. I feel like there's just a spiritual stirring this time of year. There's just something that is being birthed and taken place. Uh, you sense it. You sense it. You feel it when you go into the stores. You feel it when you're visiting your friends. You feel it in your prayer time. Hopefully you have prayer time. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. You can feel it in your study time. You can, you can feel it in your, in your alone time. You can feel it when you're around your family. I want to tell you something. Uh, one of the ways that I really measure the presence of God, because sometimes, and, and I say this um, Oh, real tenderly. Sometimes when you're in the presence of God a lot, it's not that you get comfortable with that presence, but it becomes familiar to you. To where, and I won't say that it doesn't have the same effect on you, but certainly the first time you ever experienced the presence of God was probably one of the greatest. And God can come and ebb and flows, and He come in waves, and He can certainly bring more than you've ever had before. And that'll be like a brand new experience. Don't get me wrong; I, I, I fully believe that. But one of the ways that I really try to measure if if this church is heading in the right direction is to the level of opposition against it. Come on. Because that, I believe that the presence of God in, in the, uh, the spirits of God attracts opposition. Yes. Oh, yes. And if you don't have opposition in your life, um, hello. Let, let's check our life. If there is an opposition to what we're doing, uh, the, the moment you make a decision that you're going to run after God and, and you're going to chase after God, all sorts of things in your life will usually start to uh, implode. Many things in your life, there will be a, a compressing of things around you where there are this opposition, it just rises up to match the level of hunger that you have. And, and, I, and I believe that that has been true throughout the entire Word of God and, and, and beyond. I believe that in every move of God, there is always an opposition to the change that that move of God wants to bring. Amen. Amen. There is always going to be an opposition to your hunger for more and the change that that is going to bring. And I believe that opposition to the kingdom move is matched simply by the level of the power that a church has in that region. Amen. I believe the opposition to that move comes directly against the church in that area. Yes. Not just the individual. Because so often we are out on our own and not gathered together. And I'm not saying that opposition doesn't come to you individually. But I'm talking corporately as the church. Because when Jesus was explaining the parables and teaching, which we've been looking at the last three, four weeks on the kingdom of God, he was taking them privately. Everybody say privately. privately. He was taking the disciples privately and teaching them behind closed doors so that they could understand more of the mysteries and the teachings of the kingdom of God. But yet they would go outside of that privacy and they would have attacks and opposition out there as well. Amen. Yeah. I believe that the power that Satan is attracted to really isn't just the size of the crowds that gather on Sunday. Come on. Right. But it's the ability. That, I believe that the opposition of the enemy is attracted to the ability of that local church to attract the presence of God. Yes. Yeah. yeah that, I won't say that again because I want you to get that because everything else is hinged on that. The opposition of the enemy against the church is not dependent upon the size of the church or the crowd that gathers in the church or the music of the church or the preaching of the church or all the ministries of the church or even the faithfulness of the church or the understanding of God's word in that church. I really believe that the opposition is attracted to the ability of that church to attract the presence. If a church cannot attract the presence, it's not a threat to the enemy of God. Because then all it has is its own ability. All it has is its own strength. Of its, all it has is its own charisma, if you will. Its own uh, social status in the community. And I believe that we're in the days where Satan has taken his attacks off of most of the churches because they are really powerless against him. And he is focusing even more of that opposition on key places that are hungry for the presence of God. And that's the opposition that I feel. And that's how I know that we're really going into a direction that God wants us to go is by the measure of the opposition against right. us. Amen. Not just from the outside. Yeah. I'm going to move on. I'm going to let you think on that. 
Nobody who stands against the mainstream flow of evil in its culture or even of the acts of religion to replace presence does so without the attacks from the enemy of that move and even some resistance on the inside. In every generation, listen to them, who has boldly stood to see a change for more of God in their culture, every example, you have at your, at your uh, uh, awareness, you have at your taking, you have right there in front of you is the Word of God to see this happen to every single woman, every single man, every young person, every group of people, every individual, whoever went after the things of God, who abandoned their own life and went running after God always came under the opposition of the enemy. Every generation who stood boldly, everyone that stood boldly to see a change for more of God in their community, in their marriage, in their family, in their church, in their business, in their wherever, every part of their life. Any, anybody who went after more of God saw an attack that came against them based on the level of hunger that they had. Let me give you some examples real quick. Abraham, he took a stand. God called him out of the out of, out of, out of idol worship. Abraham's dad and, and out of her, he, they were... They were, out of Rome, they were uh, uh, caught up in the religions of the world and, and the secularism of all that. And God called Abraham to step out of that. And in Abraham, God wanted to start a new move. Amen. How I many you know God is about starting a new thing? Yes. That's why Jesus said, we're going to get rid of the old wineskin and we're going to put new wine in new wineskin. Amen. Jesus came to start something fresh and something on fire. A new move, not of a God up in the clouds, not of a God up in the throne, but of a God where the veil has been rented and people can come to him one on one. Amen. And love Him and worship Him and present themselves to Him and not be ashamed or stricken dead. But we can come covered by the blood of Jesus. Abraham stands out to begin that new covenant. God's chosen vessel. Instantly his family is divided. You read the story. It says that Lot said that the land isn't big enough for the both of us. The land was big enough for the both of us because God's a supernatural God. Amen. And God could have put grass upon grass. Come on. He could have had grass come out of the rocks just like he had water come out of the rocks. Yep. But there's an opposition that comes to try to divide and conquer and separate people. Lot goes his opposite way because Abraham is stepping out into a new move of God. Abraham's life, his wife, she laughs at him when he gets a promise. She laughs at his God when he gets a promise that they're going to have a child. Even in the marriage, there's opposition that came because he decided to step out into a new move of God. I'm going to say something real quick and I'm going to move on to not get in trouble. But he even had to face the homosexual agenda in his life because he chose to step out yep. in a move of God. It's called Sodom and Gomorrah. He went to face and rescue Lot from that culture and that environment. Moses, called by God, he faces opposition. He has to stand. When he decides that he's going to answer this voice or this feeling or whatever it was to stand up and defend his brothers there in Egypt, the Bible says that they rejected him. And let me tell you, they rejected him not only in Egypt, but they also rejected him out of the wilderness if you read the story. Amen.